this is the way that I actually am going to show you how Operation Mjolnir Mozart was set up. So, with this right here, every single one of those freaking green dots is one of my ships. And everything that is red is an enemy. And this view showcases why my computer struggles so freaking much. I hope, anyway. So, now I can actually directly tell you what I'm doing here. This is the setup for the orbital station in the Terran Federate. I keep calling it Federation. They're a protectorate here. The Terran Protectorate. And I am showcasing another version of the live stream view uh, where it is focused on the civilian side, which means that it'll go into places that I can't normally get to, like, for instance, the landing pads inside of an enemy station. Normally you'd be able to do this if you had the ability to uh, be on a, a friendly station and then suddenly it was an enemy station and you were attacking it, but this is a much more direct and easier way to do that. I appreciate Ubisoft really going out of their way to add all of these new features. I, it, it's, it's a pretty standard update, but it has a lot of things that are just so we found something out subtle. Here. I don't know if they qualify this live stream view as a major update, because if they don't, they should. Anyway, um, let's continue. People will occasionally discover things in the world as they go about their daily lives, monthly, weekly, whatever, and that's what this happened right here. It's a little bit um, annoying in some cases because it interrupts the live stream view, but I also get the opportunity to show you uh, more parts of what the game is about. So, it says right there that there's a found lockbox. These things that are just scattered about the game, they have various sources. Either you can create your own lockbox, and if your ship is destroyed, it'll just be there in space, and eventually somebody will come and get it if they choose to. But, yeah. It is... Let's see here. Oh! The carrier found a lockbox, because um, it's the Tokyo, and its designation is NBW-984. In this case, I chose to ignore it, and I do believe this happens one more time, and in that case, they found a ship, but I did not tell them to ignore it. I told them to protect the ship. I didn't know what was going on with it, but I just told them to protect it anyway. We have one of those upcoming side of the station from the perspective of, oh my god, this is so freaking loud, there's explosions and there's, I'm going everywhere. So yeah, that's um, one of the things about this new live stream view that I can't control is exactly where they go with the quote-unquote stream. Sometimes they hang around on one spot for longer, sometimes they briefly go to another spot. It just, it depends, but that's just one of these little bits where you will be seeing uh, glimpses of areas that normally I can't go to, but the live stream can, because it's whatever the universe's explanation for. Maybe it's a camera, maybe it's a civilian, like I was doing earlier with Deck Officer Life. And I'm going to be returning to that with much glee, because of all of these changes to the uh, live stream view type things that I was doing. It'll be so much easier to explain when I have information you can just literally see on the screen like this that happened a little faster than i wanted um normally uh, <laughs> the station's degradation which is to say from station to scrap is a lot slower i guess um i might have to adjust one of the maybe a visual mod uh, needs updating because it seems like the timing was adjusted in the latest version 6.0 for X4 foundations. Anyway, the station's uh, upper rings are destroyed now, so that means that there is no more habitation. And what I chose to do earlier, if you saw, um, I think, when it was the attack shields first, and then I did all surface elements. And that is what you're seeing here. The shield generator has been destroyed, so now there is going to be nothing but pure damage inflicted to this station. And it is chaos. 
normally if you're inside of the station, you'll be able to see a sort of blue glow, which is the visual representation of the shields. If we do go back inside the station and look out, you will no longer see that blue glow because of the fact that we destroyed the shields. Here we have a fighter view. This one is specifically VTC-199. And I don't know who the pilot is, but occasionally you're going to be seeing the pilot too. I will be able to go back in time and specifically click on this ship in my list of all those green triangle whatever you saw. Or a different view. There's another place where I have a fleet view that has just their ship type and their little six-letter license. Hey! That's like, I guess that's like license plates. Yeah, I'd say this is the ship equivalent of license plates. And so yeah, this one is VTC-199. I can go back to it and look at the pilot and even name the pilot. Eh, but, that, you know, that's just one of those layer things. It is really difficult to hit a moving target. I'm sure a lot of you know that, but that's why I struggle so course. much to get to the live stream view, because I can't slow down time. I mean, I probably could, but I'm not going to spend that much effort just to target one ship that's going to be moving really fast anyway. Backup. And all of these ships are probably moving at, like, say, let's say, anywhere from 300 to 700 miles per hour, or whatever that is, in non-imperial units. And... Yeah. <laughs> It's just difficult to target things. So, if I do manage to click something, I take advantage of it. So yeah, please do enjoy the zoomed out view, because this fighter was going away from the retreat, because it didn't uh, want to take damage anymore, and it was going around for one of its battle loops. I think I've shown battle loops before, and they are very, very dizzying. So, this one is less dizzying. I think they fixed the level of um, rotation with how it works, but mm, it's still, I'd still maybe give a tiny dizzy warning, but not, it, it's oh, too late for works. that here, obviously. But I think I'll have to just watch and see how the fighters go in order to judge that myself. This is the view from the side of the ship that you just saw. The Terran cruiser has a captain that is this guy. And he is going through all of this shit. Also, feel free to ignore the fact that I keep calling this patrol destroyer a cruiser. Most people would call the thing that's gigantic and can launch spiders from it a cruiser. I don't know why they give it this designation of destroyer, because it's so freaking huge. But, I mean, it's a destroyer in, a, in what it does anyway, so... Eh, who knows. This, this is the struggle that I was talking about, hitting a moving target. So, this particular fighter is targeting the patrol destroyer that we just finished got talking about. And I don't remember how long it um, stays in that view, because, uh, I mean, it, it, it gets destroyed pretty fast after this, I think. Oh, also you can see the remains of the space station in the background. At this time, I was too focused on the fact that there's that there was a patrol destroyer here to realize that, oops, uh, yeah, station's all deaded. So it's orange and glowy there, and eventually I do realize, and that's when I'm like, oh, huh, space station's destroyed. All right, looks like our target is MDC-320. That is going to be the patrol carrier. I didn't actually... Patrol destroyer. I didn't look at the designation earlier to see, but I think it's the same one. I don't know if it's the same one. I'll have to go back and watch my own video. <laughs> but either way, um, I think this is about the end of it, because there's only about two minutes left. It's not a very long video, but I hope you've enjoyed this explanation so far, because this live stream really makes it easy to do that. Thank you very much.